Okay, we are back to our Tetris video and we're finally wrapping up. We're, we're probably a module or two from wrapping up what the individual brick looks like. And the problem that we were looking at when we finished things up, we were basically giving a, um, a to string function and a print function and we were ultimately left unsatisfied with, with what this looked like. Basically, we wanted this inspection to, to wind up in IEX. So if I did start mix. So if I if I said brick dot new and then I pipe that to brick dot print. Um, brick dot new is oh brick is unavailable. Did I not just alias? Oh. That's hilarious. Okay, so now I can print the brick. You can see that it has a beautiful shape here. And um, there's also a two string method. I'm not sure that I like the way that this is actually shaped. What I'd like to see is this piece in a little bit of a, a little bit more common because that's about to get more complex. So, so I'm gonna prepare a brick to, to be printed or inspected. And I'm just going to grab this code right here. And I'm going to basically, instead of calling shape, I'm gonna call prepare. And then I could start, that's going to return the points and then I can take these points and rotate them around or manipulate them as I want to. And that's going to give me a better API, I think. Let's make sure this still works, uh, recompile. And now I could say the same thing. It looks like we're still working. Or I could say to string like that. And I get the uglier version, which is printable. Um, and I think that's just fine. So what we'd like to do is when I do just a brick.new, it'd be just lovely to get this shape below us when we inspect. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, so we can do that in, in a couple of ways. The, the, first, the first thing that we need to be able to do is add a generic implementation to Elixir that tells us how to inspect a brick. And it turns out there's a mechanism for this. It's called a protocol. So a protocol in general, you can imagine that it would be very interesting to have the same code or the same API to get a size in a lot of different places, or even everywhere in Elixir. So if you implement the size protocol, then other things that need a size can actually use you. And that's what this does. So let's go ahead and grab this much now and drop it into place. And we're going to keep this with our source code because this is the implementation for inspect and it's for our brick. And it's actually, it actually has an API and this thing is set based on the definition of the protocol and it turns out we can go look at that. So if I go to hex and look at the inspect protocol, uh, it, it shows that I can do inspect that looks something like this. This is exactly what we want to do. And the inspect algebra is actually a way of letting Elixir handle those complex, those complex pieces of, of data with, with the inspection. That, um, that, that might be nested data types. So for example, if our brick shows up in the middle of say a list or a set, we'd like it to be able to set that. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time on the, um, on the inspection algebra for now. I'm just gonna take this out. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, we're going to inspect the brick. That also takes options which we'll ignore. And I'll let you go ahead and, and think about your inspection. Um, well, 
no, maybe maybe we should go ahead and do this. Uh, so let's just go ahead and implement the algebra like this, just so it'll continue working with the rest of our API. And we'll just steal this implementation and simplify it a little bit. And that should be good enough for now. So um, actually, what we're going to do is just a straight, um, so Tetris, to string, and then we want to pass the brick. So let's see if we like this code. Now if we go to brick.new, ah, oh, that's beautiful. And so let's see what happens if we have a list with a brick. This might break on us. Oh, nope, it looks just fine. So since we implemented the algebra, um, we're going to work with the in, in conjunction with the various other Elixir data types. Like, for example, maybe we have a map. And there it is. This is a brick with our implementation of a brick. And that's, that's just lovely. And so maybe... Um, maybe we should have something like a new line first. I don't know. Or maybe we, we should have, um, maybe we should concatenate that with, um, oh, I don't know, brick dot. Inspect brick location. So maybe all the other things um, we can capture in the way that the brick is oriented. Okay, yeah, so there's the brick location. So maybe we can concatenate that with, um, for example, a new line here. Let's see if we like that. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a beautiful inspected Tetris block and we can tell where it is. So, you know, if we look at all the other attributes, um, if we look at all the other attributes in a brick. So eventually we'd like to be able to show map.keys. We'd like to be able to show the location, but when you think about it, the name shows up in the shape of the Tetris block, as does the reflection and the rotation. At least they should eventually show up. So let's go ahead and make that work. So what I'm talking about is that we can have a brick.new and then um, and then I could say brick.spin90. So now this thing has been spun 90 degrees, but it hasn't moved yet. And so we need to fix that. So one of the things that we can do is actually apply is um, apply the rotation function that we've already written and we could we could add that to our prepare so maybe this is a uh, shape and then i take points dot rotate and how far do i want it to rotate but i, I rotate brick dot rotation and let's see if that points api is how we remember it so I've got to rotate 90 and I've got to rotate and that takes points and degrees. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to recompile. And now if I spin at 90, look at that. So the brick is rotating along with us. And let's do this one more time. Brick.spin 90. Yeah, it's rotating beautifully along um, uh, along the center of that that grid. So I think that the last thing that we need to do is manage that reflection. So we're not doing that and we need a random reflection represented or we need to, to actually reflect what's happening with our reflection. So we have a mirror, but we don't have a version of mirror that actually works with a hard um, that actually works with with 
um, two arguments. We have a mirror slash one, not a mirror slash two. So so if this is false, I'm going to go ahead and return points. And if it's true, I'm going to go ahead and return mirror points. So now I bet that I can call points.mirror and it can do what we want it to. So let's go ahead and pipe that to reflection. So basically this is going to call the two tuple version of our API with the points and then the true or the false. So let's do a Okay, so that's a new random and um, new random. Yes, yeah, so this is looks like it's uh, rotated and um, <laughs> we can't tell with that one, can we? Okay, this looks like it is, um, this is actually reflected. Yeah, so, so here, now those could still be rotated, couldn't they? Okay, so we can't really tell if something's reflected, can we? So let's look. Let's go ahead and add a reflection um, to, to our inspection. So maybe, uh, maybe we'll actually add all of these. So uh, I'm actually going to brick. We're going to the bottom for the inspection. And we're going to concatenate. Let's go ahead and break these off. Um, we're grabbing a new line. Inspect brick location. So we're getting the point. And then I'm going to say inspect. Do I even need to call inspect? Yeah, I do. Because I'm actually doing the, um, the translation. So inspect a brick dot and we could tell the name so I think that that's all we need but let's recompile and see okay so this is reflected very lovely um, but we can't tell if we've reflected that okay so this is not reflected so that's correct this is not reflected did we actually oh there's a reflected one and so um, this is, uh, yeah, so that's reflected. Showing correctly. We actually need the rotation, don't we? Okay, so we're uh, this is rotated 270 and it's not reflected. This is okay, so this is a reflected one, so we should be able to tell. So a flat L looks like this. So um, so this is a brick dot new and I can pass a name of L. Okay, so this is what a flat L looks like. And so if it's rotated, this would be, so the handle would be pointed to the left, but it's also reflected, so the handle is pointed to the right. So beautiful, this code is working just like we expected to. And um, so now we're handling, we're handling the prepare which we'll use to um, in, in advance of moving the Tetris point. So I think that this is probably a pretty good place to stop. Um, we'll add a few tests for, uh, for our, our prepare. And um, so I think that we'll, we'll actually test the two string also because that's an easy thing to test. 
we'll leave the print alone because that has side effects. We'll just kind of um, take our chances with that one. That's kind of a debugging function anyway. And um, we'll, uh, we can also test inspect, can't we? We can basically, um, we can basically do, um, do an inspect and, and compare that inspect against our expected results. So we'll do that next time. And that will, that will pretty much finish up the model side of this, this Tetris exploration. And then we can move on to the live view. So stay tuned. <music>